call the meeting to order. I call the meeting to order. Okay, so let's get that um, agenda. Welcome. Approval of the minutes. Are there any um, additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are accepted. Okay. Um, we could set a future date right now, if you like, get that over before Parker leaves so that we have him tied down. <laughs> and I was looking at the calendar and January uh, 5th is a Thursday, the week before the board meeting, if that would be a convenient time for people or another day that week, or, or we can look for something else. But that just sort of popped out at me. What does everybody think? I am gone from the 4th until the 14th. I will even be potentially having to miss our. So would the second or the third work then? Monday or Tuesday? The second is a county holiday. So oh, staff is. will not be here. That's the holiday. Okay. And Tuesday is my friends of the Virginia Room Board meeting, but I don't need to be at the meeting. Is that an afternoon meeting also? The afternoon, yeah. At one o'clock. So I could do the morning. Or the three, you wouldn't be done by three, wouldn't you? Or do you go to the, the library? We meet at the library, yeah. Okay. Parker, how about your calendar? And Sujatha, that's right before you leave. Is that um, a hectic it's day? A, it's a hectic day, but it should be okay. Yeah, the third, um, I'm available in the afternoon up until, up until like three. Do we like the morning or do we like three o'clock? I can't do three o'clock, but I could do morning at 10 or afternoon at two or four. Oh, I've, I misunderstood. Sorry. Yeah. So 10, two or four. And Suzanne, you said. I could do 10 or four. Okay. Oh, I can't do four. I have a genealogy meeting. So 10. You're going once, going twice. We're good. Barring anything uh, just unexpected. Okay, thank you. Fan meeting. Okay, that's done. Um, identification of future advocates. So, shall we name names? Um, or how, or go around how many of people <laughs> had a chance? I know. Um, where were we where I said I had talked to people and got somebody? Was that the we're meeting? here. <clears throat> I think it was this meeting. We just said it. November. It was uh, earlier. Okay. Oh, I've lost my list of them. So we'll start with anybody else jump in that you've been able to um, identify some people. Yeah, I talked to a few few folks thinking that I might get one of them and like all of them are interested. So Two, two neighbors, um, um, and I can give names if you if you want. Um, but the Cutlers, Peter and Mercedes Cutler, and then my next door neighbor, Richard Barron, B A R A N, and then um, a woman named Roberta Gosling that my wife used to work work for at uh, Booz Allen. She's now in Reston, and she's very involved in Cornerstones. And so she was telling me that she is. She's going to use her kits mostly on cornerstone type stuff, but she loves the library and she'd be happy to to be an advocate if there are those times and places that um, she can kind of use our talking points. So she's another good one. I mean, she's very well connected. So I would add her to the list too. That's great. Good job. I have a couple too. Um, again, like it really. Uh, it could be that the nebulousness of the ask makes it um, like everybody loves the library and everybody loves our library. So if you ask people to be advocates for our library in sort of that nebulous capacity, it's very easy to say yes. Yeah. So I haven't had anybody say no. So I, I <laughs> so um, you know, I have a couple of people like it's Stephanie Sedgwick. Um, I mean, just I don't know whether I should narrow like actually. tell them some specifics or something you know I well, hate yeah, we're not yeah we're not ready for that yet not really ready but so anyway I have people I have plenty of people so maybe you know I think that even among rotating around the people that I have that they would 
then whatever the ask is, there are people who would be happy to do it. Well, mostly I, I said, would you be willing like either, you know, to write a letter or email and or testify or, or show yeah. up. So, yeah. you know, to just to give them a sense of what we were asking. Right. Um, that was, that, so. that, that's sort of what I said. And okay. um, Suzanne, how about you said you did? Well, this is my no, this is my first meeting. And so I'm not really on top of what's to be done. But it what I would like to suggest is that we have several key people going off the city council the first of January. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to approach a couple of the council people who have good connections in the community and see if they would like to help us out. Okay. Fran? Yeah. Now that we're starting to get some um, concrete names and leads for people, would it be helpful for staff to compile those for all of you? So like if, if folks send us maybe contact information or just names for people, that way we'll keep track of a running list for you so that you have it ready the same way we used to do for the SELA committee. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Um, and so Fran, I think you should add to your list our uh, outgoing Mason District Supervisor. Yes, her mother was a, a library. <laughs> I am more. <laughs> and I was like, okay, then pony up the money, honey. But um, <laughs> when is she going out? Uh, she's going to finish her term, which ends December twenty. Oh, okay. So that's and so um a uh, a man who had um challenged her uh, at a primary the last election um has already he, he's already I, I mean he was ready to pounce on this. Uh -huh. He's already <laughs> going to be several people. Um, yeah, Andres, and then several other people as well that will primary. I yes, I agree because yeah. it's been you know a lot of pent up desire for change. So I think so. Yeah. So then, um, so and um, and I t I have people, and I I haven't con I'm going to contact Charlie. I haven't yet. I haven't done that yet. But I I know I had I had like four or five I think people in a book group. And um, oh, and Sheila uh, said she definitely would, so that's good. Um, so I think we we made a good start. And then um, so then shall each of us individually send the name. Well, send the name to the committee, so the rest of us will know as well. And then uh, Jessica will have that for staff to maintain. That's a, that would be great because that's the the question of of implementing how to use them. <laughs> but that yeah. Bobby, Bobby will email this committee, including Suzanne, right after this meeting, and folks can just reply there with names and contact information if you have it. Okay, great. Any other? Um, um, and I, I know I found the little statement of we provide the information and advocates provide their stories. So that's why getting people who, uh, like you mentioned, are already um, you know, big library supporters is it's really good because they can add that personal a personal touch. So great job, everybody. Check that off. And um I guess don't stop looking for people, right? Um you just never know. Um anything else on the advocates? It reminds me um on the foundation Facebook page, they have those new um tote bags. I don't know if you've looked, but I really want to shop and get those. They are really, really cute. They're really adorable. They're they are this little abstract things. They're really pretty. What can we do to make Phil buy them for us again this year? Mm -hmm. For us last year. What can I do? What can I do to, to oh yeah. Buy me another bag? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, and that reminds me, I'm just gonna insert this. Um it's not discussion or anything, but um Phil had communicated to Jessica and me about um, why couldn't we get a busload of friends to come to a budget hearing, and um, our reply was that you know that is definitely on our list of future of how to involve the friends. And so I wanted to let you know that, and I told him, and him that, but right now we're focusing on the advocates, the talking points, and getting ourselves organized that way, and then we will be able to move on. And so I put that on what, you know, like when you're in a meeting and somebody comes up with a great idea that you're not ready to talk about, and you put it on the parking lot. So that's where I put that, um, so that we will we will know that that came up and that we're going to be responding to it later. Jessica, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Does that sort of summarize it okay? 
Okay, great. So now, um, intellectual freedom, censorship, and the bylaws. So Sujatha. Sujatha has not done it yet. I'm just going to tell you. And I, I sent you that reminder. I know. I know. It's just too much. I went to look at it. I was like, I, I, I need to be able to sit here and look and read this very carefully. And I don't have time to sit and read this very carefully yet. So I haven't done it. I It's like every day I get like this much further. And uh, yeah, so I just so need to write up the bad incomplete. thing. incomplete. I haven't done it. <laughs> I know, That's it's totally it incomplete. incomplete. I, I mean, it's so embarrassing. If I were like white, you would be able to see that my whole face is wet. <laughs> I know, I know. It's so embarrassing. I'm just so like, your face you know, is hot, your, your face is I hot. I mean, it's just so terrible. It's, it's totally know. embarrassing. And uh, I, I just, don't. Don't be embarrassed, no. Sajatha. The reason that you all got talking points about 10 minutes ago is because I finished them about 10 minutes ago. So <laughs> we are right on your deadlines. I will tell you. Very slight, short derailment. I threw Thanksgiving for 50 people. And then we had this family wedding. That was the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And God. that, that throwing Thanksgiving for 50 people followed by a weekend of Indian wedding events. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I haven't recovered. I haven't recovered yet. And I have, it's ridiculous. I, it's ridiculous. I don't know when I'm going to dig this, this house out from under that house wedding. So yeah, I just, I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Really. Hey, I'm so, I'm so glad I didn't have an assignment because I wouldn't, have gotten, I wouldn't have gotten my assignment done either. <laughs> I, I, and I was, I was thinking of, well, I'll just look that up and see what I find. And that no, I'm not going to interfere. Well, well, you know what? I have I faith. Always feel free to interfere. I have faith. Oh, I always feel free to interfere. Like right now, I'm going to have to take this sweater off. I do have a shirt on underneath it because I'm ah! too hot with embarrassment. I'm just too. <laughs> I have made myself too hot with the embarrassment of not having done my job. Well, that's good. I feel like a good manager. All right. I didn't really have to say. I didn't have to say a thing. You know. <laughs> Time. It yeah. is, it is uh, it, the truth is that, that those are those are those are some those those there's, there's there's a lot of stuff to read through to find the place of where are we get where are we gonna shore this up. Oh my god, it's a big it's a it, it's it's I have to be thinking, I have to have my my thinking half on as they say. So anyway. that's good. Uh because I think we do want to focus on the um talking points and thank goodness they're ready. <laughs> Fran. <laughs> Dan Bern is like, let's throw everyone under the bus to keep Sujatha company. Uh, people, well, this is important. I know it is good. very important. I don't know what it is about this time of the year, but it's, instead oh, of do. it being quiet and calm leading up to holidays, no, tries to jam everything in. Yes, to the like this block time. Anyways, anyway, I will share my screen and we can talk about the talking points, which I did in fact finish very briefly in advance of this meeting. Oh my goodness. <laughs> vacation. It's okay. Okay. Can everyone see the screen and is the plan yes. enough? Yes. Okay, good. So um, at the last committee meeting, it was requested that staff draft some talking points on the three main areas that you all had identified, censorship and intellectual freedom, expanded and consistent hours, and collection funding. So that's what these are. And the talking points are really intended to be kind of elevator pitches that you can provide to those people that you're developing this list of our advocates out in the community. Um, they're meant to be pretty generalized so that it's easy for anyone to pick it up and kind of regurgitate points of them. And I only use specific data points if they are ones that were really um, close by. So our budget from the submission this year or circulation statistics from last year. So it's not long time spans. Mm -hmm. So for censorship and intellectual freedom, I tried to paint a, a picture of what we talked about at your last board meeting during the presentation, that um, challenges to individual library materials are rising across the nation. And that while many library systems have requests for reconsideration processes, that in fact right now is making additional uh, legislation efforts more viable because people are not seeing movement at their individual libraries. So if you try and challenge a book at five different locations in Northern Virginia and none of those got rid of the book because it falls within their collection development parameters, then why wouldn't you take a shot at just changing the state law so that it is either harder or unallowable to purchase, display, or highlight those materials themselves? Um, I made a point in here mm. that most of the intellectual freedom challenges that we see right now are focused on 
materials that are written for, by, or illustrated <laughs> by people who are members of the LGBT plus community or are BIPOC. And um, I hope that this last sentence is one that you all would agree with, that our library board will fight to ensure that every reader has their books in the system and can see themselves reflected in the materials available. So not having an actual ask uh, about censorship and intellectual freedom, I tried to keep it pretty uh, high level, but also things that people could take an individual sentence and go, did you know that mm -hmm. if you're unhappy with a book, there is a collection process? Did you know that people don't like that and so that they're trying to make laws change now? Did you know that most of the materials challenged are within these two categories? Um, I didn't include links. So like this is all backfilled by the ALA's 2020 most challenged book list. They didn't have the 2021 mm. when I checked earlier today. Mm -hmm. And almost all of those are featuring LGBT uh, characters and authors. There, there are some that are BIPOC as well, but most of them are LGBT. So that's the first set. Uh, Fran, would you like me to run through all three of them or do you wanna have committee discussion on each individual set? Um, uh, let's go through the whole thing. So before Parker has to leave, so he'll have a chance Absolutely. to see everything. And then, and we, and if we, <coughs> and if we get into the discussion before he leaves, he can participate too, but this way he'll see everything. Understood. Does that sound good, Bar Parker? Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, for expanded and consistent hours, this was another one where it was a little um, hard to, to draft statements that aren't an actual ask for anything, but I, I think we caught it in here. So the first two bullets are just explaining at mm -hmm. our library system what it means. So expanded hours for us is a third evening shift at communities and a full day of Sundays at every location. Consistent hours means that we have a set of hours for regionals and a set of hours for communities and that it's easy for people to remember when facilities are open. Uh, the library board started this process back in 2018 and did initially get that funding supported in 2020, which was then cut uh, when the pandemic really made itself known in April of 2020. And then the last sentence is the one that um, kind of ties into what's happening right now, that FCPL, while it does not have the current resources to ask for board support, to ask for funding, anticipates that at some point we're going to get back to a normal state and we'll want to have that again because Sunday hours provide increased access and utilization of our spaces. Uh, we have these wonderful uh, gate trackers now. So Suzanne and Fran probably remember when they worked for FCPL, how we counted foot traffic was a, a laser that your foot tripped when you walked in the front door. So when you walked in through the gates, your foot tripped the laser that counted as one person in and out. Uh, we now have a, above your head, it's called Sensource, and it's a, a different type of technology, and it gives us much better numbers on when people use our facilities. So what time of day are they coming oh, in? Uh, based on height, which we know is not perfect because we have mm -hmm. some members of our community who are all more diminutive, but we can generalize about what times of the day we're seeing more young children come into our facilities based on height versus maybe uh, older adults who are coming in alone. And what we're seeing is that Sundays are definitely one of our higher use days per hour at this point. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that we keep that data in mind in the future when we're asking for additional funds to support staff for those Sunday hours at community locations. So that's what I've got for you for expanded and consistent hours. The collection funding piece is the one that's got the most numbers in it. So I tried to make each point kind of small in case we're giving out individual bullets to people. There's one pretty chunky one at the end, but uh, most of them are pretty brief. So in general, the library board has a policy that 20% of the library's budget should go for the collection. Usually by the end of a fiscal year, we have moved enough money into that budget to cover between 11 and 14%. <clears throat> when we submitted our budget this year, we put in a request that if there was additional funding that could come towards the library's collection budget, it be funded at that 20% level, which would be about an additional $3 million. And then there's some statistics here about our circulation that we're already back over 10 million in circulation per year, which is pretty great. And that our ebook usage is leaps and bounds above where we were pre-pandemic, but we don't have additional resources to fund that. 
as our print circulation comes back and we need to continue buying materials there. <clears throat> These last three bullets are the whys behind it. That, and these were pulled directly from the Budget and Finance Committee's budget ask documents. So some of these might look some, somewhat familiar that any additional funding will be good for our patrons because right now popular materials often have wait times of over six months. And when you have wait times that are that long, that means you have to put money into those specific collection budgets because otherwise people are waiting so long they just are never gonna use the library again. Who's gonna wait that long for a book? And in turn, that means that our foundational pieces, our nonfiction collection, our children's picture books, our um, replacement books cost budget, none of those are funded well enough. So the things that are really popular, we're putting all the money into, and the things that are waiting for people to find them are getting more aged and worn over time. And when people both cannot get the materials that are new that they want because the hold lines are too long, and when they come into browse materials and see things that are worn and outdated, there's nothing in there that people really want to grab onto and utilize. So those are your three kind of big asks. Definitely this last one around the collection is the probably easiest one to make an ask around right now. The other yeah, two are much right. more ephemeris and one staff can't support at this point. So mm -hmm. I tried to make sure you had more numbers in this one about... Um, how we're not hitting targets already for percentage of the collection to go to the budget, what a fully funded collection budget would look like, that we are seeing increased utilization. We've already hit more than 100% of pre-pandemic circulation. And then the ending part is the, the why this matters. Mm -hmm. So as you and the budget committee and the outreach folks and everybody on the board really are, are looking to engage with citizens around this, hopefully this will paint a fairly clear picture of why it's important. Okay. So those are your talking points. I'm happy to add, edit, modify, or do whatever you'd like. Okay. Suzanne? Yeah, I had a question. Can you scroll up on that, Jessica? Of course. Do, Where would you um, like? Yeah. Um, the expanded hours, I'm, not a third evening shift for regionals? Uh, regionals already have a third evening shift. So we're not going back to four evenings a week at regionals. We took. Oh, I thought we were just open Monday and Tuesday nights at regionals. So right now, with our diminished schedule, regionals are only open two nights a week and okay. communities are only open one night a week. When okay. we go back sometime in 2023 to our normal operating hours, regionals will be open three nights a week. Communities will be open two. Okay. What this bullet is talking about is past the point when we're at our normal operating hours. Okay. We want expanded hours. We want communities to have a third night of service. Okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. <clears throat> Parker. Um, well, shall we discuss the talking points and um, should we decide um, a priority of which one to start with to in our limited time? Uh, Parker had a hand up. Oh, sorry, I didn't see. That's okay. Um, first of all, this is awesome information. It encap encapsulates like each of these issues in a very kind of good way. It, it provides lots of information. Um, I like the construct. You, Jessica, you said at one point, did you know? Did you know? Yeah. I, I like that construct as yeah. kind of providing the background. Um, I'm just thinking about the people that I've recruited to, to you know, have these talking points. I think they would, they would benefit from like one or two talking points on each of these topics. So a lot of this to me is very important background information. And then, and you even said it, like, we don't know what the ask is yet, but it's, did you know, this is why this is important. And then the ask and like for the first one, I would think the ask would be, look, we need the board of supervisors to, to ensure that every reader has their books in the library system. I mean, that that's the that's the ask of them, I, I think, but that's kind of a very high level take. And I, I just like the the construct of background, why it's important, and then a couple of specific talking points for each of these. I think that's a really good point because um, there's a lot that's that's sort of maybe too much in depth okay. um, for for uh, our users. Okay. Um, and and I like the idea of of having the information and then 
And then that other, th did you know? And then an ask. I think that's great. A great idea. So for the first one, I added in a, a draft ask at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We need the board of supervisors to ensure that every reader continues to see books that reflect them in their libraries. So would you, what would you like me to, to cut out or minimize if you well, want this to be, be more concise? Be, before we do that, I wonder, do we want to start with um, one of these uh, um, or to make sure that we get, like, what's our, our first priority of um, when budget time comes up? To me, it would seem the collection, but it could be expanded hours. I, I'm, I mean, what, what do other people feel? Um, I or think maybe they fall into different categories of ask, you know, like I think a budgetary ask, it makes I me, mean, I, I think that the collections makes good sense for a budgetary ask first. And then the second one being the staff, the, I, uh, the one, whatever the next, whatever the second one, the, the middle one was, however, mm -hmm. about staffing mm -hmm. for expanded hours. So, because, you know, I think they go hand in hand. But the first one is yeah. a very different kind of an ask. The first one is more of a sort of a values ask. Um, mm -hmm. And that is like, you're going to get a different response depending upon which supervisor you talk to, who your supervisor is, you're going to get a different response. Um, so it's just, I think that that idea of it's being framed as, did you know, is really helpful because it makes people who are not really, really subsumed in library library lore, let's say, or library culture or any library history or any of this stuff to be able to very quickly say, did you know that these are the kinds of things that most people are mostly concerned about when they are putting in challenges? Did you know that these are the things that we would do with money if we had, you know? Mm -hmm, that, yeah. Things that don't get, things, did you know that these are the things that don't get funded when we aren't fully funded? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a really nice way of framing it. It makes it really easy for these advocates, the friends and advocates to speak to anybody and certainly also to their to their public and then they to, to also frame a conversation or a presentation an email whatever to your to your mm -hmm. supervisor since these are the th since this is the case we need you to do this because these is the case but when you talk to the community did you know mm -hmm. I don't know I like that a lot that's really I good too. I do too I like it Suzanne any thoughts yeah well I think the budget funding is the most important one to highlight just because we have no control really over when we're going to get the staff positions filled. There was a piece on the news last night about the police department being down something like 170 positions in the county. And, you yeah. know, you can't recruit people who aren't looking for jobs. So I would I would make the stronger um, emphasis on the collection funding right now, and the others will catch up when available when we can. Mm -hmm. I assume the budget money is still there, Jessica, to hire for all these empty positions. Absolutely, the budget money has not gone anywhere, and we continue to robustly recruit uh -huh. constantly. It's just that we lose as many people as we gain. Yeah. 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 So, okay, so shall, oh, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so order wise, I hear you want collection funding first. Yeah. And then expanded and hours second, and then mm -hmm. some intellectual freedom third. Mm -hmm. That you want a clear ask at the bottom. You want them shrunk a little bit so that it is much more pointed and formed in a way so that it's like a the start of a question conversation. Did you know this about this? Did you know mm -hmm. that this was going on? Mm -hmm. And here's what we need your help with. That's that makes a lot of sense. Okay. One of the Do things they need to be shrunk. <laughs> they don't look like they're too long to me. I I, I just I think that they have a, like a good amount of information per bullet. I don't think that there's anybody that we're asking to do this for us that would be unable to, <laughs> to, to digest that and regurgitate it in a way that's meaningful. Regard depending okay. upon who they ask or talk to. But obviously I do agree that they could be shrunk to people <laughs> who are going to be doing any social media around them. Obviously I think then that they would be framed differently. Oh shit. <laughs> so did I just say that? Did I? <laughs> no. no, it wasn't no. me this time. It wasn't me. <laughs> it's usually me and it wasn't. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's actually what Fran meant when she was talking about. I think that the did you know? Yeah. 
makes it manageable <laughs> as an ask. Okay. But I don't feel like there's too much information for bullet. Did I misunderstand okay. that? I mean, I. Well, I think they, I think they could be tightened up. I, if that's what if I'm reading you correctly, um, I think we could, um, a, and you know, especially since you know they've just been they've just been done and they have and and they're great with the information. But I think you know they're at that point where yeah, some editing and uh, tightening them up a little bit is really good. I, and a question that I have in the collection funding about the wait time, and I know um, especially like. For Mason District and then whatever is really is close to Alexandria, I know that the city, library users there will go to another jurisdiction's library. And whether that's something that we want to bring up, I think it is with supervisors when you're writing to them and say, you know, because because we're not being funded, then people think Arlington is better. Is that what you want? <laughs> you know, as a way to put that, or they they would rather they'll go to Alexandria because they won't have to wait so long or you know, I mean, with the with the because we still have the reciprocal borrowing. I mean, you could borrow ebooks from District of Columbia libraries, I believe. You, you absolutely can. I so, don't. I don't know that that is what I would recommend for a few reasons. Uh, the first is that depending on which library system you go to, they're going to have wait lists just as long as we do. Yeah. So you might be able to get some things on a shorter wait time, but some things might be longer. And you know, Arlington versus Alexandria, both of which border that part of the county have vastly different funding structures and availability mm -hmm. and many of our board members are supportive of regionality the fact that a resident mm -hmm. could get a library card at a couple of different areas is a yeah. it's a bonus yeah so unless we were pulling like a like unless we found a specific book like did you know if you regularly use the tj library and you wanted xx title it would right now, this moment in time, it would take you three months to get it from Fairfax, but only two weeks to get it from Alexandria. You know, that might make a point, but it's just a moment in time snapshot. I might do a little test, a little science fair project on my own <laughs> yeah. to see. Yeah, well, I no, I wondered about whether that was, um, you know, yeah, th thank you for that answer because that, that was that was good. Um, well, there's, there's an interesting one out here right now. I have if anyone has read um, Colleen Hoover, who is a very popular book talk author, uh, right now, I, I pulled it up in advance of this because I'm on hold for it. Um, I'm on hold for a book called It Starts With Us. And uh, I don't have my wait time, but right now there are 1,040 something Yikes. on hold. Um, so we own 90 copies of the ebook not just the book book, the ebook, and the waste time is uh, more than six months. Wow. Oh, excuse me, there are 1,020 people waiting. So, you know, that's, that's a pretty hefty wait list. And um, I personally have library cards to many of our surrounding library systems as well. Mm -hmm. And this is the one it selected for me to be put on hold for thinking that this would be the fastest get on it which is still not great because nobody wants to wait that long for it. Well, and it's interesting, the, the books that I talked about in terms of becoming advocates, that this is the one issue that they are passionate about. Like they are, well, that was the one thing that got them really interested in becoming an advocate when I was talking to them about this. So I think it's great that we have that one as the first one. And, um, and my only point earlier was in terms of like the ask piece of it, it needs to be like really tight and really like one or two points because we we have to know our audience. Um, this right. may evolve to a point where we're gonna maybe we draft an email that people can send or draft a letter that they can then personalize and and use it however they want. This first exercise in terms of the talking points, it it should have a lot of background. It should have mm -hmm. a lot of did you know and then just some really tight. Um, ask the talking points piece, but I need to drop, unfortunately, and, and hop on this call about tariff. Like, I don't want to really, I'd rather be talking <laughs> about this than like tariffs, but um, so anyway. We'll see you well, next thank time. You. Yes, Happy thank you. Happy holidays for everybody. And yes, you Merry too. Christmas and all of that. Well. And so. We'll <laughs> see you Wednesday. Always yeah. think, Parker, always think That's if you right. were talking about tariffs, who would be talking about tariffs? <laughs> it's so good that someone is talking about tariffs. And not <laughs> us. You know, yes. not us. Someone is talking about tariffs instead of us. <laughs> For that, I am truly grateful. <laughs> <laughs>
Be good, everybody. See you. Okay, uh, take, well, care. Take, take care. Take care. Bye. So do we want to go through starting with collection and do um, rewriting or do we want to, um, you know, each per each person do something off off site and send it in or how do you want to proceed with this? I mean, I always vote for Fran making edits first because Fran's edits the are queen of edits. Fran, <laughs> you're so good at it, right? Oh, so, oh, oh. Um, you know, staff can make edits if you'd like. You all can make edits. Uh, I can send you all around this version with kind of the highlighted bits if needed. If you don't want to do editing live time during the rest of your meeting, whatever works for you. I will be looking at bylaws, girls. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not signing <laughs> on to do it. Really? You so better. You I, better. Guess, you I can't better. handle another you meeting. Better. I feel like the this. Pressure. <laughs> the pressure. Pressure. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I will be doing bylaws. No, okay. Send them, send them. Yeah, send it out, and okay. um, and we can all work on them. I definitely will. And if people want to wait until I've, you know, done a little bit, and then we send it again, and and all other or plan. It's not going to be me. I just trust you. I'm no, you're going to be doing this. I guess I'm going to be doing the bylaws too. No, I'm just ah. kidding. I'm not that kind of a busybody. I'm not going to do that. Um, and that, so, but but yeah. But Suzanne, you're going to give Suzanne, you got a, a medical issue. You gotta stop. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. <sighs> Seriously, it's like I don't have anything under this red shirt, so I can't take this off. You cannot embarrass me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't feel that pressured. It's a volunteer. I really do. It's a I volunteer really job that you have. So please, I have don't, like don't. a lot of volunteer jobs, and 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 it is just terrible when I when. I, you know, it's embarrassing to let balls drop. So, Jaffa, we have all been right there. <laughs> Don't worry about it. No. Um, okay, Fran, if you'd like, then I will send around the modified copy that we have from today with the highlighted areas around the did you knows and the asks. And um, we will, our trusted leader will make it beautiful. So, and I will give myself like, what's the date today is the Today's eighth. eighth. So I'll give myself it like a couple of weeks to get it back to you. Is that too long or a week? What do you think? Yeah, that's fine. I'm anticipating that most of the folks on your committee and myself are likely taking a little bit of time off with family around the holidays. Like, so Jeff is going to be off after in the new year. I'll, I'll be off um, the week after Christmas, but we'll, we'll all be around. We can parcel it together okay i'm not the one as i thought i'm the one who said i think they look good <laughs> <laughs> i'm never looking for new projects girls never ever ever looking for new. no projects. they they do look great but i think that uh, I you know totally what understand i think you, you I don't think need you... to defend yourself i completely understand you it's just that i'm never looking for new projects so when That's when all. you look at the talking points and i think this you know this i'm just reiterating what parker said if, you know I'll, I'll be thinking of the people that i've hmm? asked and i'll think about well like with sheila it would be great yeah you know and um <clears throat> but I, people in my book group yeah different. i yeah. wrote these in the frame of mind of an elevator pitch so i was writing them as if a trustee was saying them to one of the potential advocates mm -hmm. but that may not be the right frame if we are giving these to the advocates to use themselves so i agree there's edits are always welcome well you know what's interesting to me is like when i'll i was talking to uh, oh I, I wrote this this in a letter to you about pages about a friend of mine oh, yeah. who 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 remembered his first job the first job he ever had we were talking about well, what's the first job you ever had and his was a shelver they didn't call him pages and he just you know like we're old we're 70 something and he remembered back when he was you know in high school and or junior high maybe and he had this job and the whole thing that how how it really made an impact on him. And where am I going with this? Um, oh, and I started talking about ebooks and, you know, being not being prepared or having looked up anything, but just re the few things that you can read that you remember from other presentations about they consider software, they charge three times more, only for a certain number of uses, just a few things and that people don't know. Yeah. what goes on in libraries and so when you're able to explain you know sort of pull back the curtain and did you know about this and they're like wow I had no idea 
yes, that's why we need more money. So write a letter. No, <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a great, great frame. Yeah. Okay. So I we wasn't have that. called a page either when I started. My position was called a departmental aid. Oh, pretty snazzy. When you were in high school. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I asked him if he, I said, cause you know, in Arlington, the children's librarians supervise the pages. And so that was where, so that was a way that children's librarians got, got experience managing. I don't know if that's true here or not. No, it isn't, there's a page manager. Um, and then you put, the new person puts a streamer in the book and then you would go back and check and pull the streamer or let know the, he didn't have to do that. They trained him and then they just sent him out to shelf and that was it. <laughs> no quality control but anyway so okay so we're done with talking points anything else um on anyone's mind where are you going Sujata? are you going away yeah <laughs> no i'm sorry sticking uh, to business business we're going talk. to hawaii so <gasps> wow. we often go to hawaii in, in january my husband has a conference there so ah, we... nice <laughs> suzanne any any issues on your mind for us? No, not my mind is pretty shot. I've had the flu, so I'm oh, sorry. I'm my brain power is slowly coming back. Okay. I'm sorry about that. I know I miss Thanksgiving, second oh. year in a row. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. I know. My friend who has COVID, this most recent COVID, it's not whatever it is. It seems like it has a specific uh, pr um, presentation. And it's it's quite brutal. It's quite brutal. She had the flu, and of course, the bi she had the bi bivalent um, vax yeah. and flu vax. And she thought she was testing negative for COVID for several days when she was feeling terrible, and finally tested positive and just terrible. So much chest congestion, so much throat pain. It sounds really rough. Yeah, I've been coughing since mid November. <laughs> Terrible. So Jessica has posted the link to the foundation's um, bags shop where they have the, the abstract animal bags. They are just adorable, aren't they? You've seen them, I'm sure. Jessica. What are they all cat bags, Fran? No, there was a frog that was just, oh my God, I loved it. So the artist who helped make those for the foundation is the same one, I believe, who helped with their prior print run, last year's bags. Oh, okay. oh those are ones. Jesse. These ones are influenced by Mondrian. Yeah, okay. they're so cool. Frogs and cats. And beautiful. Is there a cat? I don't. Oh, you're looking at it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I opened it up too. Yeah. yeah. Just in time for um, holiday shopping. It's great. Yeah. I need more tote bags. <laughs> we have tote bags. I know. I I'm, I'm being facetious. I know, right? I need them like I need several holes in my head, and yet I can't. So, so one thing that I um, thought, you know, we have um, we have the calendar, the brief calendar from um, Keith's committee, and I wondered. Um, I had sort of just <coughs> written in um, March for public hearings and April for public hearings. Um, so for us to think about um, if we could be ready to call on um, uh, any of our advocates for um, for a March support. Aren't they usually early April? So March are the, are those the local, local town halls. So it's like the Mason okay. District Town Hall, yeah. the yeah. Franconia District Town Hall. And then April is the full public budget hearing in the uh, board auditorium. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So does that, does that seem like a realistic goal? Um, Jessica, what do you think? It's fine by me. And so Jeff, I'm sorry, I missed what you said. No, yeah. No, no, I was just saying like, even then in the lead up to the March meetings, uh, contacting your local supervisors, letting them yeah. know that this is something that you want mm -hmm. to bring up, that people yeah. may be bringing it up, that this is why they're bringing it up. And yeah. we as trustees sort of set the stage. So when they do come to talk, they're prepared to hear it. Their brains are already open to the information. Yes. So they're, they're listening to a lot of different people on that those days with a lot of different complaints and a lot of different asks. So if we have primed the pump so to speak that when they hear this it'll flow right in there and then in april when they have the full board it might be even more more receptive so, so you all uh i believe received your board packets earlier today the digital version You'll get yeah ones over the next couple of days and one of the things i'll be talking about at your full board meeting next week is the budget forecast that the school board and the board of supervisors received 
about a week and a half ago now, maybe two weeks, it was right before Thanksgiving. And what they have heard so far is that even though there are projected increases in revenue based off of residential real estate valuations, that the anticipated expenses on both the county and the school side are going to mean that there's a deficit of about $80 million with a flat budget flat. For, for both agencies uh, beyond like market rate adjustments for staff. So I, I, you know, I am all for, let's put the ask out there. We're not going to get anything if we don't ask. Mm -hmm. And it is going to be a very tough sell knowing that there's a lot of other stuff that is going to be queued up and, and fighting for dollars. And it's election year. And it's election year. And we've got two board of supervisor members that have identified that they are not running. So Mason District Supervisor Gross and Drainsville District Supervisor Faust have both uh -huh. sent out notification that they are not running again. Uh, Waukenshaw in Braddock District, Lusk in Franconia, Alcorn in Hunter Mill, uh, Chair McKay, and... Pat Herity. Pat Herity has not announced yet. Neither has Smith or Palchik. Okay. The other person whose name I'm missing right now has announced they're running again. Okay. Lusk, Alcorn, oh, Stork in Mount Vernon. Okay. So we have five that are rerunning, two <laughs> that are, are vacating, and three that are as yet um, to un unannounced. Okay. So it will it will be a, a busy election year now. Um, so when I make my report um, on what we're working on and then... Um, if that's okay with the committee, then I will announce that we we are hoping to be able to tap advocates to advocate for us starting in March. So I'm and even though you know they will know, I forget the order of who says what when in the meeting. But but even though it's a flat budget, like you're saying, Jessica, if you don't ask, um, there's no way. And this kind of um, even though we know the likelihood is small we still need to pra it's like practice it's you know the rehearsal how, how does this work what can we do better um how are we gonna you know we'll just see and it keeps it keeps us in uh, it keeps us top of mind yeah so, and things get more flush you know yeah asking for a while making a good pitch and the issue was that they didn't have the funds so when they yeah. do have the funds and um they hear from us again they're like oh yeah they they've asked before asking. so yeah that's a good point yeah and i don't know whether um supervisors answer each um you know like if if advocates write a letter or an email if they get a reply and then that sort of is the beginning of a relationship yeah. that might not have been I there before i mean yeah, it, de it depends on the board office so some of them will yeah. have auto replies when you first email them that says, hey, I got your email, uh -huh. I can touch. Uh, most of them tend to be really responsive though, like Jeff said. Yeah, great. So then it's still relationship building, um, which is gonna be important in the long-term. So we have long-term, short-term and long-term. Excellent. I wanted, I Excellent. wanted to, um, um, before we, we, we dial up, just bring up um, uh, something that, a concern that goes to one of our three um, issues here. A uh, candidate was just um, just elected to the Herndon Town, Town Council here in Drainsville, um, who had on his, um, I was trying to pull up my picture of his campaign materials and I can't find it in my, in my pictures, but he had in his campaign materials, a focus as one of his priorities on making sure that um, parents have a say in the collections that was something he campaigned on mm -hmm. and it's in his literature that he, mm -hmm. he believes this. Now, of course, town councils are not partisan and they usually have party endorsement. This year, Drainsville did not do that um, for very complicated and political reasons, did not do that. Um, and so really what happened now, he is the vice mayor of mm -hmm. Herndon. Wow. So this person who ran on that platform, and people don't really even know what the platform is. It's a very small community of people that vote. The town of Herndon is fairly small. So it's just, it, with all the political shenanigans that happen in Herndon Town Council elections, this happened. He is now town council vice mayor. Um, I just wanted to make that on, put that on everybody's. It's on, it's, it's, it's right here with me, especially with the work I do in schools. Mm -hmm. um, that this is something you know it is as insidious it is insidious and yet it is present and it is absolutely critical that we are it's great that we have this as one of our 
issues mm -hmm. that we're looking at because mm -hmm. you know that if that happens like that through you know nobody's necessarily thinking about what that means yeah and then a person gets a position of power and and, yeah. and a whole lot of so you know what that makes me oh i'm sorry well, well, i was just gonna say i have the the vote results up and i was so he's a new representative he's new he's brand new uh he a nice mayor wow clark he's hedrick new. or clark proud hedrick. of to call Clark Hendrick, Pradeep Dekal is wonderful, <laughs> wonderful and does not think that, but, but Clark Hendrick is the one I'm talking about. And um, now he's the vice mayor of Herndon. So the person who's the second greatest, biggest vote getter becomes vice mayor. Oh, okay. So wow. That's the way that that works. Um, and yeah, so that is something that to just, if it happens here, it can happen anywhere. These slight sort of like incremental yeah. increases in power, yeah. in power grab with yeah. that on your with that on your platform and people yeah. don't even know what that means because anytime somebody's in giving, making sure parents have anything like i'm a parent i want to make sure that i have a say in stuff and whatever so you don't realize necessarily what that means unless that you means. realize what that means and what that brings up in my mind is like you know i do um review books for school children's books for school library journal and um the idea of what uh, professional librarians, how they decide what to buy and how they review books might be an interesting um, presentation. Um, so that, so that, and I'm thinking of, of later when we're talking about intellectual freedom and, and, and this idea of, you know, well, why did they decide what we're going to get? And, you know, it's not like you close your eyes and you run down and put your finger on a title. There's a lot of thought that goes into what gets purchased. Um, and, and I'm thinking um, not so much in the balancing collections, but you know, an individual title that you look up other works, you look up what do we have, what's, um, you know, is it well written, all of those things that go into it. Um, that's not just, uh, it's not just looking at a catalog and buying a book off a list. So that's another There's, there's a professionalism that doesn't get this, that people don't acknowledge. Right. That's right. And understand. Um, yeah that yeah. goes into to, to this, it's professional practice, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that sometimes there's a lack of respect there. I mean, there's just a lack of respect there for what that professional practice actually is and what it indicates. That's right, that's right. For and sure. I'm, gl I'm glad that we're putting it in, even though we have not faced this, that it has been focused on the schools. I think we're right to be getting ready to be proactive yeah. because when they finish with, if they ever, they won't finish with them, but they'll still come for someone else. And it happens if you think about the, even like say the segregation report that was done by, um, by, by, by the, the foundation members that did that or library staff that did that. Um, it's going to be published January 7th. Which is extraordinary, right? But when yep. you think about it, like the question that I posed to the group at the time was, were our libraries segregated? The answer was, oh no, our libraries weren't segregated. So, so, yeah. so the thing is that it was so insidious. And if you re go back and read that book, the cleverness with which it was done and the argument that was made that this is, libraries are sort of, you're just passing by one another. You're not in close contact for a long time. So you don't have to spend as much time being worried about segregation in libraries the way you would in close contact over long periods of time like you have in school. And that was the insidious way that our library system remains segregated for a long, long time, you know, mm -hmm. exactly like this. Where people don't necessarily realize that the libraries are having the same problem because it's not front of mind the way schools are. But we have to be super hyper vigilant to make sure that we're protecting this resource for our community, for everyone. Okay. Anything else or anything? Well, so next time we'll be talking about um, bylaws. <laughs> bylaws. <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about bylaws. We're just going to hear Sujatha's report on whether we need to talk about bylaws. So Sujatha, you could come and say, I read things and everything is fine. <laughs> I'm not letting you off the hook. So, um, uh, so I, I think we're ready and I'll, I'll put together, uh, we'll work on the agenda, but I think we're, we're pretty set on what we're gonna continue, like, well, finalizing talking points. And um, yeah, there you go. So there's a, there's a really old picture book and it was a whole bunch of them and they all, about a kid, a character, Cowboy Small. And the book always ended, and that's about all for Cowboy Small. <laughs> like, after his story. <laughs> so anything else? 
So shall we call for adjournment? And we're set for our next meeting. We did that. January 3rd at 10 a.m. Okay. And we'll see you all Wednesday night. Wednesday night here again. Here. <laughs> Live on camera. Live on Zoom. All yep. right, everybody. Have a good weekend. Absolutely. 